Tammy. We're registered dietitians, personal trainers, and nutrition coaches for Q kinetic.com we're q coaches and we're so excited to be here today we're going to talk about one of the biggest things and the best things that you can do when you're dining out and in fact all of our clients do this and it it surrounds the biggest mistake that you can make when you're dining out what do you think it is do you want to tell them yes no i'm going to tell them because <laughs> she never lets me get a word in that's no, why she's going to tell you. tell you this is actually a really good reason it's a really this is good news i'll let her share bad news with you but the reason, the biggest thing that you can do and the biggest mistake that you can make when you're going out to dinner is getting to dinner hungry. Now, Huge mistake. And Huge. I know it sounds counterintuitive, like it's something our dad would have said when we were growing up, like, oh yeah, go to dinner, but don't be hungry when you get there. But it's true. And the thing is, how does that feel as re to hear from registered dietitians that we're not saying the worst thing you can do is necessarily the choice that you're gonna make, but getting to dinner hungry. Here's why it's so bad when you get to dinner hungry. First of all, you get there, your stomach's grumbling, you can't make a rational choice. You see that menu and suddenly everything looks good. What might You might know it's bad for you, but you don't care. You just wanna be filled up. Then you order, you order what you would have never normally ordered. The bread basket comes or the chips and you're so hungry you eat everything in sight. Then you feel sick about it a little bit later, but you don't care because when your meal comes, you still continue to eat and eat because you're starving. You should be fed, and right? And what if they asked you if you wanted alcohol and you took it? That's another problem because if you got alcohol first on an empty stomach, it's gonna hit you sooner and you're gonna have less control than you normally would and you're just gonna eat more. So the good news is that we have a really simple fix and every single one of our clients do this and they see great results. Now we call it the pre-veggie and tea meal. And you can do this at your office and you can do it anywhere. And it works, we promise you, it works. Here's why it works. First of all, let's talk about the tea. It's warm, it's pacifying, and the magic ingredient in tea is an amino acid called theanine. Theanine brings on a mental calmness, yet alertness. So when you get to that restaurant, you're going to have some tea in your stomach, you'll be warm, you'll be, it will pacify you. But also the other thing, the trick is that this mental calmness allows you to make a calm and rational decision, so you're not going to go for the triple cheeseburger. And it also allows you to be alert, so you're not going to kind of be in your snoozy state and order that triple cheeseburger. And the truth is, you guys, making tea, you can do this at your office, it's so easy. You just need a microwave and heat water. And you know, we have our clients do they'll just take a tea bag and throw it in their, in their gym bag and bring it to the office. Um, if you're a tea connoisseur, you know, you want to do this, well, you can bring, this is my Alice tea cup um, in New York City. We have an Alice tea cup, just loose tea. I put it in here with some ginger. And then we just, you have your microwave mug of water. You just put it right in if you don't have boiling water. It's so easy. And it's a foolproof way to really make sure you're gonna take a little bit of the edge off your hunger before you go to eat. And here's the reason why you wanna have the veggie, the pre-meal. The veggies are great because they're going to fill you for very few calories. They've got the fiber which helps to fill you and they're going to take that edge off the hunger. So when you get to the restaurant, you don't need to order everything there and you don't need to dive right into that bread basket. Plus, research shows that people who go out to eat get way fewer fiber and nutrients than people that don't go out to eat. Now, we know that Americans go out to at least to dinner at least one time a week and if you're a New Yorker, study shows it's a lot more than that. So we really need to get the nutrients and fiber in first, especially if you want to be regular and not in a bad mood tomorrow morning. <laughs> True. So that is our very, very important tip. Before you go to a restaurant, make sure you have that veggie pre-meal and that tea and you're good to go. One other thing, sorry, she cut me off way too early. Veggies, they're so realistic to take to your office. We showed you all you have to do is microwave your tea, your water and you've got the teacup. You know, baby carrots, you throw them in your bag, keep them in the refrigerator. You don't even have to keep them in the refrigerator. They'll stay for the day. And just cut up some sliced vegetables and they're great to go. And you can even, I mean, you can pick them up nowadays at the drugstore, at Dwayne Reed, anywhere, and you're good to go. So now we're going to ask, answer some questions that you sent in for us. Eric Brody asks, Thank you so much for sending the questions. Thank you. When I go for sushi, I never know how much I should eat. Any advice for me here? I feel like I could eat a lot. Eric Brody, this is a great question, and I'll tell you why. Because even we have had this issue when we go to sushi, and we're, we're trained professionals in eating out. 
And what we will tell you that with sushi, it is a tough one because there's not a lot of fiber in general when you get there, and that's how we usually like to fill up. And it's a lot of, there's a lot of rice and a lot of protein. So, you know, you can have a few, you just six rolls and you feel like you can still be hungry. The good thing is if you really look at the menu and you get to know it, there's always edamame. So always start with edamame, right? Edamame's great, it's steamed, it's high in protein, and it's high in fiber, so it fills you up. There's another it's healthy. dish. Yeah, there's another dish that's really good. It's a spinach dish, and if you don't see it on the menu, ask for it. It's a cold spinach in the, almost like a soy sauce. And ask for that. That's a great way to fill up first. So also, up. The, the house salad sometimes good. And you can get that ginger dressing on the side and then kind of dip your fork, stab the salad so it's not drenched in the dressing. Yeah, and you know what? Most people don't know how many calories really add up. Um, in general, if you wanted to keep your meal around 400 calories, this is a good kind of range. It's good to think about having also some sashimi, which is this, the pro, the, the, the fish. Raw, just the fish. Right, without the rice. We like to do this too, because sometimes the rolls, if you get it, it if you put the cucumber on the outside, it helps to, so you're not just getting tons and tons of rice and calories. But you can pretty much assume in six pieces, you're getting almost three quarters cup of rice. And most people don't really, you don't really want to be having more than a cup of rice. So if you're having, two rolls, you've already overdone it a little bit. The other thing you can do is ask, and not all restaurants will allow this or have this, but sometimes you're gonna ask for the brown rice and then you can up the fiber or the nutrients that uh -huh. way and actually get the whole grain. So what we usually do ourselves is we'll try to have those vegetables we mentioned first and then we usually try to have a little bit of sashimi or you know, stick to one roll and some sashimi. And also the soup is really good, it helps to fill you. So the soup is a, is a good one there because it is really over, easy to overeat sushi. So we hope that answered your question. Let's go for the next one. And just tweet us if it didn't, and we'll finish it off if you have more questions. Now this one is from Kel, Kel Z Wills. Kel Z Wills, I love it, Kel Z Wills. Um, I'm trying to get leaner, and I always thought egg white omelets were the best option, but someone told me this isn't true. Same for oatmeal, question mark? This is actually a really good question. Now, if you make egg whites at home, or you make oatmeal at home, you're, doing something good, you know exactly what's going into it. But a lot of our clients, you know, are very social, they'll go to brunch, they'll order the egg white omelet and they'll order the oatmeal. And what starts off as a really good meal, it can go south. Because what you have to think about is that at these delis, they're piling in a lot of butter and a lot of oil. And so what starts off as something that's very healthy and lean and low fat, the calories get packed in. But there's a really simple solution, thank goodness. You wanna tell them? I'll tell you, I'll tell you. <laughs> the really simple solution is simply to just ask your server to make the, the omelet dry. And say just, you know, can you just not add any oil or butter? Can you just serve it dry? And believe me, there's enough oil and butter from the, on the grill from the person behind you that your egg, egg white omelet will taste totally great. You'll be totally fine. But make sure you add vegetables in there. That's what I was going to say. That is the, the key, is really get some fiber in it every meal. We always recommend this, and it makes any meal so much more nutrient dense, and you get the fiber, and then you get the phytonutrients, and all the things that fight disease. True. Ask for all of those vegetables to be tossed right into your omelet. So whether it's the spinach, the mushrooms, onions, peppers, whatever you like, get it in there, and put it in there, and it will help. Right. And as for the oatmeal, oatmeal in general is going to be a pretty healthy option. The reason that I'm guessing that someone might have said that or you might have heard it that is that the serving size can be really big. So at home, you know, you're used to maybe make just, you know, your, your, your little serving of oatmeal, but when you get it and it's given to you out, you know, they give you a really large serving and you really want to only have about a cup. Uh, more than that is just going to add up a lot in carbohydrates. So um, that's probably why I'm guessing, or maybe right. they add like a something really like butter in there or something right. heavy. But remember that when you do have the oatmeal, you do want to combine it with a source of protein because just the oatmeal by itself is carbohydrates, your body will burn it up quickly and then you're not going to stay satisfied. So maybe having a hard boiled egg and then putting some berries into the oatmeal for some extra fiber and nutrients. Yeah. Okay. Shot by Smooth is our next question. From at, at Shot by Smooth. At Shot by Smooth. What are some great things to add it to a post-workout smoothie? What are some great foods besides a smoothie I can eat post-workout? Ooh, great question. Well, after a workout, you're always looking to repair and rebuild those muscles. So you want some carbohydrates because your body just burned off all of those carbohydrates and you want to repl replenish what's called your glycogen source, which is your muscle energy. So for the great carbohydrates, fruits are always good because they also contain those phytonutrients that are going 
kind of mop up those free radicals that damage our bodies. So that they're a natural part of, those free radicals are a natural part of m when you exercise and you break down muscle, if they come in and it just is natural, but damage is done to the muscle, so repair it. So that's a, so fruits are always great when it comes to throwing them into a smoothie because they add a lot of sweetness, a lot of fiber, a lot of nutrients. But then also you do want some protein after that workout. So great things to add are Greek yogurt. We always love that. Um, one of the best things to add also is would be just milk. Skim milk if you like it um, for a great source of protein. And that's the combination again of that carbohydrate and the protein is what your muscles are really going to eat up and help them to repair and recover best. Right. Um, and then the uh, second part of the question was, what are some great foods besides a smoothie I can eat post-workout? And oh. again, it's the combination of the carbohydrates and the protein. So the Thanks. list really goes on and on. Smoothies are great because they're fast for a lot of people, but what if you didn't have a blender with you? Like even the, the basics that you make in the smoothie, if you had to grab a yogurt and a piece of fruit, that works well. So it's just really that carbohydrate and the protein. And people think it's just protein, but really you need that carbohydrate because even when you lift weights, you're burning off that muscle glycogen. And within a half hour after working out is really, they call it a window of opportunity. And you wanna make sure you replenish in that time because your body, one, is burning like crazy at that time. So it's a good time to take advantage of that burn. But it's also gonna be very receptive at that time to pick up nutrients and, re and reboot for the next day or the, your next workout. We hope that answered your question. And let's see, our next one is from at Shai Kastabi. Shai Kastabi. Shai Kastabi says, in your opinion, what's a better option? Smoothies or green juice? Ooh, Ooh that's a trick question. I was about to say that's a <laughs> trick question. And here's why it's a trick question. Because both can be really good and both can be really bad. So when someone says, what's your feeling on smoothies? We're always, we both are always like, that's a loaded question because a smoothie can be really good if you've got some fruits and some vegetables, but it can also be really bad if you've got some fruits and some vegetables <laughs> because that you can really put in so many fruits and not really, you would know if you ate eight, eight apples, but you can blend them into a smoothie and suddenly have an 800 calorie drink and just drink, drink it down and not have any protein. Um, at the same time, a lot of the smoothies now have a lot of sugar added. Syrups. Yeah. And green, and the juices, green juices in general can be really good for you, but um, sometimes there's added things in there, and sometimes they're really hard to, they're hard to get down. I mean, I guess in general, would you say green juice? Well, it also depends on your goal. If you're just trying to get nutrients in, just lots of things that are going to fight disease, then maybe a pure green juice might be best, but a smoothie can be great too if it's got your fruits that are really, you know, great, like the berries are packed with nutrients. And then also if your goal is to say, as you, the earlier question, was to replenish your glycogen source after a workout, green juice might not be the best. It's not going to have enough in it for you, whereas a smoothie would be a better option if it's made correctly with the protein and the protein combined with the carbohydrates. And actually, I have another tip for you today, and I was asked this earlier. A lot of people that make the smoothies are very used to just putting fruit in, and they're wondering what's a good way to get some vegetables in there. You know, they're kind of a little bit hesitant to add, start adding some greens into the fruits because the fruits taste good and sweet. A great mild vegetable to start with is spinach. It's very We know it doesn't mild. sound mild, but it actually is. It is, and you, you really don't even taste it, and you just add a little bit of spinach, and it's a good gateway vegetable into the other vegetables when you're making your smoothie, because you blend it in. It might change the color, but I promise you, you won't taste it, and if you put it in with what you're putting, what else, other things you're putting it in, um, that, that would help. But I'm not sure if we really answered the juice smoothie question. It is a tricky one, but it depends on your goal, but either one can work. They both have can be great and a great way to get nutrients. Just watch the sugar and all of anything you add in. You don't want to have a lot of syrup or a lot of sugar. We hope that answered your question. Again, we are the Nutrition Twins. We are so thrilled to be here today. I am Tammy. I am Lisey. We are registered dietitians and we are personal trainers and we are thrilled to be Q coaches at kinetic.com. Check back with us really soon, kinetic.com. Next week, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.